Hi there guys, it's Lee here, welcome to iMind Blocks. In this video we're going to be taking a look at Bitsend. I'm going to be showing you how to get started with the wallet and start CPU mining this coin. So this coin is about roughly a year old but it's recently been rebooted, some new features have been added and it's been updated. Um, I like it mostly because it is CPU mineable, it's got a unique algorithm, it also supports uh, masternodes and private transactions, you can also use Instant X, which gives you an almost instant transaction basis as well. It's got a good uh, little growing community and overall I think it's a good coin with a low market cap so that's why I'm going to be showing you this coin today. So let's get started. The first thing we need to get started with is the actual wallet. So I'll provide all the links that you need to get up, up and running. Uh, if you start at bitsend.info, that's the primary main website for this uh, coin, and you can get started there. So from that website, if you go to the wallet and then you go to wallet download, you can just download it and it's just a standard QT type wallet. It's a EXE file and you can get started with that. So if I just minimize that, you just download it to your desktop or your downloads folder wherever you like and then just double click on the actual wallet to open it up and get started. I've actually already done that and mine is up and running. When you first start the actual wallet you'll get a, a synchronization sort of chart bar at the bottom there and it will take quite a few hours to get synchronized. Um, but in the meantime one of the things you can do or one of the things you will actually need to do is uh, create a wallet address. So in order to do that, and you can do this whilst it's actually synchronizing, you don't have to wait for it to be fully synced to do it. You just click on receive, and then what you're gonna do is create a new address. So in this case, I'll just do demo. You could just give it a name, the amount you can leave blank, and the message you can also leave blank. Um, for your, for your, sorry, a better reference would be, whatever your machine that you're gonna be mining on would be a, a more useful reference. So uh, you can see I've already got some worker details down here so I've got worker 1 and worker 10. If I do worker 3 because that's probably one that I will use in the near future and it's CPU uh, minor just missed a letter there I think because I've actually got the minor running it's kind of uh, interfering with my uh, keyboard it's a little bit laggy so sorry about that so worker 3 CPU minor we're just going to have that as a label and then we're going to click on request payment so you can see we get a QR code we get a sort of short link and we get an address so what we want to do is actually copy this address try and not get any space on the front or the back of the address and control and C and we're just going to copy that or you can use the, the buttons that are helpfully uh, laid out there for you as well so once we've got our address we can then basically move on to the next stage which is mining so I'm just going to close down the wallet for the time being. Uh, we'll open up the web browser. So I'll put all the links in the actual description. But the miner that we're actually going to be using is the uh, CPU Miner Opti Miner. Um, I can't remember the exact version. Let me just double check. Oh uh, yes, uh, CPU Miner Dash Opt, and the current version or the version that I am using is uh, 3.60. So use the link, I'll put a link in the description for you and you can download it and you should end up with a folder that looks like this with all these files inside. So at this point you're kind of uh, ready for mining or almost just about. Um, let me just do one other thing. So I've got a few other windows running here, sorry. So I've got the ETH miner running. I'm just going to close that just to help the, the on-screen display and this is the actual uh, CPU miner uh, mining bits end so I have a i7 950 it's overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz and we're getting this it actually reports two hash rates I'm yet to confirm I think there's actually two algorithms mining at the same time one is x11 and then there's a, a separate part to it as well so I'm confirming that so you get two hash rates um, and these are mine obviously just to share it with you and I'm mining on three threads so I'll just close the miner for a moment and I'll show you how to get set up and started with it. So once you download the folder, you'll have a, sorry, once you download the miner, you'll have a folder like this one. And what I'll do is if you download using my link, I'll include a um, start example.batch file so you guys can edit that and get started with it. But I'll just run through the actual basics of um, how to get that set up. So if we right click and then we go to edit, 
these is the internals of the actual batch file. So what I'll do is I'll break it down uh, for you um, piece by piece so you can understand it and, and use it. So the first part is this part here, which is, you can see up here, these are the actual program names. So I'm using the CPU miner and I'm using the SSE 402. The second part is uh, with regards to the instruction set of your CPU. So if you've got a really old CPU, you're probably going to use um, SSE2. If you've got something slightly newer, SSE42. If you've got something within the last year or two, you can probably use um, these ones, which support um, AES-NI and have a slightly newer instruction set, which is also faster. So for example, on this machine here, it's a i7-950, and I can use the SSE42 instruction uh, set. So that's the, execu uh, the executable that I use. On my um, newer CPU, which is a i5-6600K, I can use the, the AES-AVX2 um, program, and that basically means you're getting a much faster performance because it uses a different instruction set. So just start with SSE2, and if that works, move on to the next one before you move on to the AES ones. So the first part is the actual minor program itself. The second part is dash O, and then it's the poor address here. I'll just show you in the browser. There is a whole bunch of different pools that you can use. Um, these have all been checked recently. And the setup for each of them is roughly the same. Um, I decided to use this wimp.cc minor org. Um, and I got started with that and that's been working fine. The only thing I don't really like about it is that um, you can't check your minor stats on the pool, or at least I couldn't find anywhere to do that. So um, that is the only thing I don't like about it, but I have received payouts and that's been fine. So pick a pool, and then you're gonna put your pool address in this part here. Like I say, I've already done that. Uh, one other thing I will mention with this pool, I'm not too sure if it's relevant with other pools, and um, there was about a 24 hour delay before I received my first payment. They wait for a lot of block confirmations before they pay out. So uh, once you start mining, it will probably be 24 hours at least before you receive your first payment into your wallet. So just to make you aware of that. The next part is the algorithm. So it's uh, Zeven, I think is how it's pronounced. Um, so this is a multi-miner, so you can use it with different algorithms, different coins, etc. The next part, dash U, is this part here is going to be your wallet address. So like I just created a moment ago, we, uh, let's just show it and we're just going to copy the address. So you would put your address in here, like so. And then you've got dash P, which is your password, you just leave that as X. And dash T is your CPU threads. So I've got a four core or eight or eight with hyper threading. So I just use threads free. That works best for me. At least one thread open for browsing and all that kind of stuff works fine. And then at the bottom, we've just got the last line, which is pause, which means it's useful. It keeps the window open if the miner crashes or anything like that. And you can just see a little bit of extra information. So once that is all done, you go to file, you go to save as, and whichever you want to call it. So we'll just call it start demo dot that. And then you've got save file type as, don't save it as a text document. You go to all files and then you click save. And that will save it in the same folder. So I'll just close the browser down now. And if we go back to our main mine folder, sorry, I'll just close the wallet down there as well. So we've got this start demo. Um, obviously you can just see it's the one that we just created. So now we're ready to run the miner using this. So we can go to start demo, we'll double click it. It opens up the miner with our configuration. You can see our configuration at the top there and then it starts mining. So you can see also the details regarding the CPU. So we've got i7-950. It reports the, the stock speed, not the actual um, overclock speed, by the way. And it also shows you the algorithm, which um, instruction sets it supports and also your which um, instruction sets is supported by your CPU as well. So between the two of those, you should find um, uh, a good a um, a good ground where the um, you can basically get the best performance from your hardware. That's the that's the point I'm trying to get out there. Um, and that will mine away. And like I say, in that sort of earlier part of the video, you would have seen my sort of um, hash rate. 
on my i7, sorry, on my i5 6600K, uh, which is overclocked, uh, I get, I think it was around 1000 kilo hashes and 71 kilo hashes on that other CPU. So just to give you a, a rough sort of basis. So that's the miner running there. I'll just stop that again, just for the demonstration purposes. Okay, so back onto the actual wallet itself. Uh, just to give you a, key, a brief overview of um, kind of earnings. So like I say, um, I've been mining for about 48 hours, but there is a delay of 24 hours before receiving the payments. So you can see I've got Worker 10, which is this machine that I'm on, and these are all the payments for it. And Worker 1 is my other, um, the i5-6600. That's the other miner there. So in 48 hours, but only really 24 hours, like I said, there's 24 hours lag behind in the actual payments. There is 5.89 earnings across those two machines. So it's not a huge amount of coins, certainly not um, a massive amount uh, from a financial point of view. Um, but I do believe this could be um, a good little coin in the future. We'll just kind of have to see how it grows. Uh, if we go back to the actual market cap, it was um, really high just a day or two ago and it's now kind of bumped back down. So from here, as with these coins, we never really know um, exactly where they're going to go. Um, but I think this could be have some life potential in it going forward. Okay, guys, so I think I'm going to leave it here for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching and um, best of luck with mining bits end with your uh, mining hardware. Um, hopefully you uh, do well with it. Of course, if you do get any problems, um, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. Um, that's never a problem for me to, to help you guys out. If you did like this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, I do put out videos like this on a regular basis and I hopefully you'll enjoy watching and being part of our little community here. So till next time guys, thanks for watching, take care.